In Nigeria as well, election is one of strategy. And the strategy of election in Nigeria is very simple. Bribe INEC, bribe judiciary, commandeer the security, and they are done. The, the people that destroyed 23 election is INEC and judiciary. The rules were clear. The, son, the electoral act is not perfect, but it was very clear. I, I, I'm surprised that any judge who understands administrative law, which I have taught in the university for years, which I studied under the best in the world, would argue that an entire regulation built on a law, an act, a regulation, directing that you will do X, you can choose to do Y. When there is legitimate expectation and detrimental reliance, INEC was totally wrong. And the courts, Supreme Court downwards, got it wrong. When an agency created under the law with a known act and a constitution that says you can make rules, makes rules, those rules are law. They can unmake it through rulemaking process. If they don't, they are bound to obey it. Results should have been transmitted electronically. I'm ashamed. I have a PhD in law and I can stand anywhere in the world to dispute the best and brightest. I was ashamed that the court affirmed that I can just walk away from the law. Five years I was a regulator of electricity. When we make tariffs, it's the same way I makes rules. We make those laws, tariffs. They are legal instruments. They are binding the law. I hold I make responsible and I hold the courts responsible for the failure of the elections. <laughs> Sir, it's important to clarify who can sue. Here is the point. Electoral jurisprudence, the problem with Nigerian elections is that they don't understand electoral jurisprudence. Electoral jurisprudence is that the court's job is to restore back power to the people voting. Democracy is not... A, the dispute is not between Mr. Amade and Mr. Kutipupa. No. It's about the people's right to elect their leader. Therefore, we shouldn't be saying that only persons who contested and who could have won could file electoral petition. No. Citizens who voted have a right to go to court and say that the, the, the process was faulty. Look at the U.S. jurisprudence. All the cases that went to court in 2022, in 2020, I guess, were mostly by civil society groups and voters. That should change. Now, what does it take to nullify election? I always wonder why judges feel that what they call substantive justice, substantive compliance. If elections were conducted outside the rules, that is enough to nullify the election. You don't have to prove that you would have won. Elections should be nullified if they are conducted Contrary to rules, our jurisprudence is faulty on that. So the question then is, there's a key, a key point somebody mentioned about too much burden on the, on the judges. It is caused by INEC. And I make this clear. The new Electoral Act provides two safeties that we destroyed. First, internal democracy. It says that all candidates must be either elected directly or indirectly if you choose indirect, then he laid out democratically elected. Let me say it clear. The court has a right and a duty to overrule parties if they present candidates they did not go through their rules of the constitution and their own internal rules. There's no justice like saying, look, there are three people here. Members of the party have a right to due process. That's why the act provides for it. And that's the constitution provides for it. So if you do not second guess politicians, then you are, it's not that you are imposing the candidate, you know, you are requiring them to follow the rules. And that's what the Supreme Court has been saying before. And the final point I want to make is very clear on this. INEC needs to start doing administrative adjudication. Now, let's be very clear. Every process in an election, including rulemaking, including the kind of results, are administrative procedures that require due process. Meaning that INEC should be sitting and making rulings on objections during collection of election. I watch the drama where INEC says, 
call result. You call result after I go to court. No, that's not the way. There is an intermediate procedure before adjudication in court. That is administrative hearing. You must establish the validity of those results through a process that INEC cannot make rules, which the court will now review through judicial review. So the critical point is here, and I want to end on this note. The Amity case you mentioned, sir, interesting case. The court did something that was nice, but look at the failure. The issue is, it's not for the court to impose candidates. Courts can refer results and ask people to elect, to go back. So we have to redraft timelines to allow for repeat elections, not imposition. And the key point here then is that this is not a matter of nicety. I like the point you made. Politicians are my dogs. You need to police them. But when the policer of my dog is himself mad, then that's confusion. The judiciary should no longer be thinking of politicians as people who want to do public good. The public interest is to impose order and regularity in politics, not to allow politicians to self-regulate. That is a lesson of history. I don't blame politicians. I blame judiciary. I blame INEC because they abandon their work and politicians are the ones who can never see power and leave power. You have to treat them as persons who have adverse interest to public interest and force to regulation the convergence of private and public interest. Thank you very much. Nigerians, we need to wake up. See, we need to begin to take actions. And you know, we can't just continue talking like this because what I have observed is we just talk, 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 talk. After three or four days, the matter dies down. No, what we should do now is seize the opportunity of the Freedom of Information Act and begin to ask questions. We need to start writing petitions. Because without petitions, these security agencies, anti-graft agencies, they will pretend as if they don't know what's going on. And in fact, I won't blame them because as far as the NMPC is concerned, <laughs> it's only what they tell EFCC that EFCC can know. It's only what they even tell Tinubu that Tinubu can know. He can know more if he he's savvy enough. But you know, because of his age, I am very certain that Mele Kiari and his cohorts at the NMPC are giving Tinubu the run around. But what does he care? So far as he gets his billions. What does he care? So it is up to us to come together and begin to use Freedom of Information Act to request for information and begin to use petitions. We need to begin to write petitions. I'm drafting one. When I'm done with it, I'm going to present it so that the petition will not be coming from one person. When it's coming from one person, it's easy for them to target that person, either by bribing the person or by taking the person out. But if it's coming from many people, then it's difficult. That's blockchain technology. It's difficult for them to, to take the person out or take any person out or even bribe any person. So for security reasons, the petitions, the Freedom of Information Act, all of these things must be coming from different, different people. So when I finish it, I will post it. We must all take action together. All of this first scarcity we are experiencing now, it's a gimmick. They want to use first scarcity so that when you guys are tired of first scarcity and they now come and tell you that the landing cost is 1,300 per liter and that they must sell at 1,500 naira per liter, 1,800 naira per liter, you will not complain. That's what they are driving at. And unless we take action now, they will get away with it. They got away with it before. Don't sit down there in your uh, comfort of your house and say it cannot happen. No, It will happen again unless we take action. And of course, we need to change all of these leaders. If you have not joined us, we need to create a political party with clearly stated ideologies. I did a video about the ideologies. It's on this, this channel. It's on this platform. Watch it. And then we need to come together to form that new political party. All you need is just click a link. That's all. Nobody's asking you for any money. So that together we can change this country. Enough of all this rubbish.